Hi, once again I'm going to do something serious before returning to my comedy work. I wanted to talk about something that is a serious issue in not just this nation, but the entire world. And that issue is smoking. Oh boy, I can see the comments now. The main thing that I could do, I could present you with numbers and facts and figures about how deadly it is, how many people are doing it, and that's not really important because we hear that sort of stuff all the time. In fact, cigarette companies are often the ones responsible for releasing ads against themselves because basically it advertises themselves, so they don't really care. They know people are going to do it. What's the main problem? Well, the problem as I see it is that nicotine is allowed. It's one of the only narcotics, the only legal drug that's still allowed in the United States and other parts of the world. There's no place where nicotine is illegal. Why? Well, because as far as we know, nicotine by itself doesn't kill. Although you probably overdose on it if you took enough, just like anything else. It's allowed, and it's addictive. It is a narcotic, it changes your behavior, and it addicts you. So why is it legal? Well, I don't know. It doesn't really make a lot of logical sense. But it's not like they could just illegalize it tomorrow and everybody be like, oh, okay. No, people are very, very strong-held opinions about smoking or nicotine because, well, they're addicted to it. And they'll defend it, like, brutally if they have to. I've heard people argue, get red in the face, and basically just get really upset about this issue. Like, this is my right. You can't take away my right. Well, the other part about this is prohibition that was in 1920 tried to get rid of alcohol and cigarette smoking and failed miserably. I think they were trying to do too much at once. But basically you can't get rid of two things at the same time. Alcohol I think will stay around but I really think that smoking doesn't have to. And there are inherent problems with alcohol. The two are related in the sense that they're both legal things that can change people's attitudes and perceptions of the world. But I think really all you have to do is illegalize nicotine and the rest would follow. Now many other drugs are illegal yet people still get them and there's a huge market for them. So if you legalize nicotine would it follow suit? Yeah it probably would. So again it's one of these issues that like probably couldn't be solved with just one law it'd have to be a whole social thing. People would have to want to change. People would have to say, you know what? As a species, we need to grow out of our immaturity and our reliance on these sort of illegal substances and realize we need to grow up and get rid of these things. They're harmful, they're addictive, and they're just bad for you. So why not just get rid of them? Well, I don't know. Maybe that would make too much sense. Maybe that's making light of an issue that's overly complicated. Like I said, there's just way too many numbers and factors involved here. I can't list them all. It would take forever. And you all know it anyways. Smoking is bad for you. The fact that it has nicotine in it makes it addictive. If it didn't, then I don't think as many people would smoke. But that's just my idea. I think probably people would get it anyways because, well, they're addicted to it. Well, what if you put those people in programs to help them become unaddicted to nicotine? Would that solve it? There's millions and millions of people that are addicted. So, you know, again, you can't force people to go to programs. So, I don't know. Would it have to be a generational thing? Like, just basically wait for those people that are addicted to either become unaddicted or you know, not be around anymore so that the next generation wouldn't have this problem? Maybe. I, I don't know. But again, it would have to be a social change and not just a law change. People themselves have to sit there and say, you know what? We're tired of this drug being around and we're tired of people dying from cigarettes. Let's get rid of cigarettes. Let's get rid of nicotine. Or let's just get rid of nicotine and maybe the other one will go away too. It has to happen, it needs to happen, 
but I know, I just know people are going to defend their right to do it, which really to me says a lot about people. Basically, you know, I kind of want to say, hey, you remember when there didn't used to be seatbelt laws? I don't, because I wasn't around then. But there didn't used to be seatbelt laws, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, yeah, there's seatbelt laws now, because it will save lives. Well, what about a law that says, hey, no nicotine, because that will save lives? We know that smoking kills people, and the secondhand smoke kills people. It's horrible. It gives people all sorts of diseases and stuff. I mean, come on. But people are like, oh, it's my right to smoke. And you know what the number one, number one thing I've heard a smoker say about smoking? Well, you're just going to die anyway, so you might as well smoke. Wow. I mean, seriously, this is your defense for doing it? It's okay because you're going to die eventually anyways? So, such a bad, bad excuse. You know... It, it's true, yeah, we're all going to die eventually. We don't know when, where, or how. But honestly, I don't want to live my remaining days out with, like, having limbs cut off because of cancers or having to get uh, lungs replaced or having to live on a respirator because of smoking. And I've seen that happen. It's horrible what happens to smokers towards the end of their lives. Uh, it's just really deadly. Uh, cancer is horrible, and smoking causes it. So yeah, I guess you're right. It's going. You're going to eventually die. But why suffer as you do it? And the other excuse is, well, I'm addicted to it, and I can't quit. I've tried to quit. You know, there's many free programs, and there's even programs that will pay you to quit. So I just don't see um, if you really are committed to doing it then I really don't see you not doing it. It might be hard, but yeah, things are hard. And you always see people cheer and clap when somebody says, hey, I finally stopped smoking and I've been not smoking for years. And my thing is, like, well, what about all the people that have never started and never will? Why not clap for them? I mean, they've avoided doing it. They've avoided doing, uh, falling to the social temptations of it. I mean, come on, where's all the clapping for them? You know, it's kind of like you don't get rewarded unless you've done something bad and then became good. I, I think that's a little backwards. Again, I think this needs to be a social th change more than anything else. It has to be like a personal level, like, I don't want to, therefore I'm never going to. And yeah, there's going to be those social situations where people are like, here, you want to sm smoke or, you know, whatever. But, you know, and we've got to just say, no, no, I don't. It's going to kill you. So, no. I'd rather not, because I'm not interested in what your opinion of me is. I don't want to look cool. It's not going to make me any better of a person. All it's going to do is addict me. That's why I said, get rid of nicotine. Then, you know, it wouldn't be addictive, and maybe people wouldn't do it as much. Anyway, it's a huge issue. I know it's a huge issue, and I don't know if I'm accomplishing anything by ranting about it, but really I just wanted people to think about it. Think about changing for the good of themselves, for the good of the world, for the good of our society and humans as a whole. We need to grow up and get rid of these sort of things once and for all.